Today is a red letter day. I finally finished the electronics, or at least the, the concept electronics, for making this whole extender workable. These are two PCBs that are essentially just giant CAN bus bridges. So this PCB is an actual bridge. Uh, via this connector, it gets power, two pins, and then uh, two pins are one CAN bus and two pins are the other CAN bus. And this acts as a transparent CAN bus bridge. So what this does is messages come in via one bus. This PCB receives it, possibly modifies it. I'll come back to that later and then sends it over the other bus and vice versa. So if you put this on an existing canvas, i.e. you have this bus, uh, you snip the wires, uh, you put one end in one bus and one end in the other bus. As far as that bus is concerned, nothing has happened. It just seems like there is a little bit more delay in the wire, but that's really it. However, what I can do with this is intercept messages and either just not send them at all, which means that I can block certain messages from going through the bus, or I can modify messages. And so that is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm taking the messages from the main high voltage battery in the car, as well as the messages that this PCB is going to send from the extender, adding up the capacities and then sending that to the main computer of the car. And then the main computer computes, hey, I can go many more kilometers than I thought, which means on the dashboard, I now have the correct amount of kilometers of range left instead of something much lower and yeah, running on essentially no idea of how full the battery is at some point. Now this uh, PCB is much bigger because there are four CAN buses, which are conveniently numbered two, zero, one, and three. Uh, this PCB interfaces the extender batteries. And the reason there are four CAN buses is, well, there's one, number three, that goes to the rest of the car. It's connected to the EV CAN bus, uh, which this is also connected to, so they can talk to each other. But buses zero, one, and two are connected to uh, different strings of the extender battery. And the reason for that is, like, why didn't I put all of these batteries on one big CAN bus? Well, there are conflicting addresses. I am uh, using batteries from a car that only has eight modules per car, which means that it, if I have 60 modules, like in my car, uh, there are going to be repeated addresses. And in my case, there are uh, at most three repeated addresses. So I put three different CAN buses on there. Now this PCB, obviously, it um, manages the BMS that's built into all these modules. So it uh, tells the modules to go and balance and it tells them uh, go and send me your voltage information and then receives that, formats it and outputs it on the main EV CAN bus. So enough waffle, uh, let's build them into the car and see what it does. So this is the extender board installed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously there's going to be, uh, this is going to be potted and uh, it's going to be in a good enclosure. <laughs> it's uh, not very safe right now. Uh, but these first three CAN buses go to this orange wire, which goes to the extender. And then these wires go to my main connector that goes into the EV CAN bus. Uh, there is a battery temporarily as a power supply. So if everything is functioning, uh, I should be getting messages from this board in front of the car where the EV CAN bus comes out. Oh yeah, by the way, sorry about the background noise. There's a lot of construction going on around here. It's impossible to find a silent moment. Anyway, the little board is now connected to the main CAN bus, uh, which is there. <laughs> it's very precarious. Um, and then there is a uh, USB to serial module here going into my uh, tablet. All right, I'll get to the serial interface in a second, but first, let me just show the car starting. That was interesting. 
So yeah, the uh, the capacity there it's uh, oscillating a bit between two hundred fifty one and two hundred fifty two uh, kilometers. But yeah, that is that is correct, roughly. That's about a doubling of the um, the estimated range on the main battery. But this is about what we got as well. So this is a good uh, good estimation. And this is the uh, serial port output. As you can tell, there is a lot of stuff coming by. Uh, this is all the CAN messages on the bus, and you can see they go both ways. Uh, the CAN messages going from bus 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 are marked uh, at the beginning of each line. So honestly, there's not that much more to say about it. It works. The dashboard uh, gives me the correct uh, amount of kilometers, and that is exactly what I set out to do. Hey, I found a solution to the noise. My hair is weird. Uh. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, I cannot overstate how important this is. Uh, the fact that that board there uh, can act as a transparent bridge uh, with full output capabilities. Uh, the reason this is important is not just for this project, but in general for cars. Uh, it's uh, very hard on a CAN bus to find out uh, what is sending messages. So uh, th this is because everything on the bus kind of acknowledges every message and everything can be sending the message. There's no way on the line itself by the voltage levels or anything or by the IDs that the um, messages have to know exactly what is sending it and what is receiving it. So this little board can be just a general automotive uh, tool. And obviously people have done this before, this is not new, uh, but the previous solution was to have a computer with two CAN bus cards in it and uh, do debugging via that. And that is a bit uh, costly and cumbersome. And this can just be easily put somewhere in the car and uh, you just never mind it. And uh, permanently connected to your car computer or something, which is what I'm gonna do. So yeah, this is like a really important thing and may be very useful to many people. Uh, now there are still some issues with these boards and I'm going to revise them probably this week. Uh, it, you can see a couple of them. Uh, first of all, there is the, this is the serial port and there is an isolation slot here. The plan was to pot this entire thing uh, like most automotive uh, electronics, uh, completely seal it off from any moisture ingress and uh, make sure that, that it can dissipate its heat relatively easily. And the problem here is that the chip that I chose um, is uh, an isolation chip, just one of those standard uh, capacitive isolation chips that apparently wasn't that standard. Uh, it went out of stock pretty much everywhere <laughs> as soon as I wanted to assemble these boards. So I have to uh, replace them with ISO 7221s, uh, which are extremely easy to get. Second problem is, as you may be able to tell, that board there still has the LED on, even though the car is off. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always on. The, uh, the power uh, to the VCM and to pretty much everything connected to the campus is always on and there is uh, a wake-up message that the VCM the main computer sends to everything to signal that the car is supposed to turn on and everything is supposed to turn on uh, I have to trigger around that uh, because right now this uses about 60 milliamps so I will definitely drain the main battery if this board and the board in the in the back is just continuously on this is also the reason why in the back I have a battery connected to it because I just don't want to drain the main uh, lead acid battery. That means that the car just doesn't start. Another issue, which I have to resolve in software, is the fact that this car is not actually full. Uh, I have test driven it for five kilometers to, to just test whether everything was uh, stable. And before that, uh, it wasn't even fully charged. So it, uh, it has 250 kilometers of range, but it should be closer to 300 if it's completely full. Yet, it is showing 12 bars. And those bars will only go down once I hit the original 
uh, range roughly. So from about 110 kilometers downwards, only then will it start counting down. Now you might have seen that EV warning light coming on. Uh, that's another issue. Uh, that is uh, uh, an EV system DTC, diagnostic trouble code, telling me that there is a high voltage isolation issue. This is something that has not yet been reverse engineered as far as I know. Uh, there is a, uh, a sensor in the main battery pack that senses the uh, resistance between the 12 volt system and the high voltage system. And uh, when it senses that the resistance between those is too low, i.e. there is there's a, a dangerous bridge somewhere, uh, it um, pretty much stops your car from being able to restart. And this warning light has come on more and more in the past few weeks. Now I know for a fact that the isolation resistance for the extender pack is good and that my cables are good. So there's something going on and I am wondering because uh, more people have been reporting this issue in just regular stock leafs. Uh, maybe the issue is an oversensitive sensor. So I'm going to attempt to reverse engineer this signal, see where it comes from, what the what the actual uh, value is, and then uh, hopefully uh, find some way to either fix it in software or find the actual fault. Maybe there is an actual fault. Uh, this could be in a couple of places, but the fact that it's uh, that it comes on without the uh, motor inverter being on means that the motor inverter is probably fine something else on the high voltage bus that may be faulty. So tomorrow I will be driving to Amsterdam and back and I will be doing that with this whole installation in place and I really hope it will work. Uh, I'll keep you posted and in the uh, coming week or so I'll also be making an interface that will uh, use the information coming out of the the little bi-directional cam bridge to uh, make nice graphs and graphics in general uh, of the extender battery and the main battery and showing how balanced everything is and all that good stuff. And hopefully that will translate to a car computer uh, at some point. I'm not sure exactly when, but I hope to have a full car computer with all this information uh, ready this year. So yeah, this is like, this is a big step. Uh, these kinds of electronics, they seem very simple but they are actually super time consuming to make and uh, it really finishes off uh, this whole project. So I'm really happy with that. I hope you are too. So uh, see you next time.